I met Stu at university, obviously, and we kind of came and we did sort of sketches and writing together at university, and so we came, we moved to London in 1989, right, in the summertime, to um, sort of try and write for the radio and stuff, so we'd, nice. we'd met Armando at college, at university, but we didn't really know him that well. So yeah, we kind of got together and uh, we were two of the writers on, on that, you know, coming up with ideas, although the whole thing was kind of fairly improvised, so we came up with scenarios and occasionally with lines and stuff. Um, and it was, yeah, I mean, it was kind of incredibly successful. So. It's been confirmed that Ireland has burst. The cockatoo-shaped landmass blew open along the southwest coast, squirting millions of tonnes of noxious fluid into the Atlantic Ocean. So it was just over those four or five years, I guess, 90, but sort of really 1990 to 94, 95, we were sort of working on the radio, and then that kind of led to fist fun on the TV. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we did a series and then they came back and said, well, we want to change it, it's putting off older people because it looks too young and so we had to change the titles and the studio and, you know, I think it was a mistake. I think I think, it, I think the first series was really interesting and good and then they kind of took a lot of the heart out of it and made us be in this studio in Thrones and... I mean, I still like the second series, but Stu's heart wasn't really in it saying anything to me, so I kind of guess we probably weren't going to get a third series. So we just, you know, we changed it just because that was what the, the, the BBC were kind of trying to work out what to do. And it was weird, that was, it taken us about 10 years to get to that point, and the, B, the BBC had kind of paid for us to get good at what we were doing, and I think we just got to an interesting point with the double act, and then it was kind of stopped, really, because of the BBC. Hey, it's the Christmas postie! That isn't for me, is it? That's right. Yes! It isn't for you. <laughs> it's for Janet. Hello. Well, it's from me. It's... Hey, piss off, bean face. <laughs> Damn my bean-shaped face. Um, so I'd known Al for a bit, and that really, because it was partly because Stu was script editing Harry Hill, I think was, I kind of, and we both had the same manager, and I said, you know, I think that's a bit unfair that Stu's got this job here, script editing, because I do all the the kind of intricate work on, the, you know, Stu leaves me to do all the kind of basic script editing of our scripts, and I was working much harder on our scripts. And so I think, partly, it was partly that, that they said, oh, well, you could script edit Al's, Al's thing. And I think Al had also seen my plays in Edinburgh and liked them. So he, he, wanted, you know, he thought I could... So to begin with, he was going to write the scripts and I was going to script edit them. And as we just started working on it, we realised that you know, it would be more efficient if we wrote them together and then increasingly I wrote them and incorporated bits of his material, and especially once the series got going. As it occurs to me, as it occurs to me, as it occurs to me, not as offensive, I don't think, as, it, as I kind of attended, you know, I thought it might be, or I maybe intended to be in the first place, or there's not that much swearing in it, really. It's, it just gets, I mean, you're allowed to go a little bit further. But yeah, I mean, I really like the, the, the freedom of it as a, as a writer, and, and also just the exercise of doing it stupidly quickly. Is I'm getting more used to it. It's, re, it's really unsettling and makes me unhappy to be putting out stuff that isn't finished and isn't, you know, haven't had enough time to work on, but then it's also quite exciting to do that. and make it more improvisational, but also to just to go, right, here's an idea I literally had 30, 15 minutes ago, let's see if it, I can make it the work. The DNA tests, the DNA <laughs> tests. <laughs> I read it every day on my show. I saw, the <laughs> DNA <laughs> tests. Just the, three letters. I, I know, but <laughs> how can you? I might have to read DNA. Me something else. I don't know how long we'll carry on doing as it occurs to me or what will happen to it, or, but I've really enjoyed it up to what it is. I, th I think once it starts feeling too difficult or it's too the same, or I can't do anything interesting with it, you know, I might, might knock on the head. I've had very, it has been very mixed reactions, I mean, but you, I kind of enjoy that, you know, that most of my work seems to get these very disparate reactions, uh, and, and I think that's probably a sign that it's working, to be honest, in that some people really love it, the book, and some people just are, are angry about it and furious about it, and it says more about them, I think. It's, it's interesting to me that people, some people can read it and think it's just bragging about sexual conquests, which I think, for me, it seems to be largely you know pointing out when I've failed in sexual conquest there's a couple of sex there's a couple of bits that I suppose are about sexual conquest but not they're not written in well hey look at me as far as I'm concerned company of such tedious mortals is not something that you crave so you head to your hotel alone again contemplating the fact that the fleeting adoration of a room of drunken idiots is probably no substitute for the true love of a faithful wife or the unconditional devotion of a tiny child so you drink yourself into oblivion before inevitably tuning in to lusty asians 8 even though you haven't seen lusty asians 7 and are worried you might have missed some important plot developments is in you know, but then I don't think you're you know. I, it was quite a personal thing, and, and it was quite close. I was quite close to it at the time. It just sort of happened, so it was very difficult to be 
honest and open and and you know and, and protect the way you re- reveal yourself but I you know I deliberately tried to I didn't I wasn't trying to paint myself as being this wonderful person nor was I trying to say that I'm an awful person I was trying to say I went through this difficult time some people just read it and obviously have an issue with someone sleeping with more than one person or behaving in a certain way or they read you know they, they put their own morality onto it and, it, and it and that's quite interesting to me that people seem cross you know married people it's been married men who've been married for 20 years seem furious sometimes with me and you kind of think well why is that you know if you've done the right thing you would feel sorry for me right you wouldn't feel angry with me you'd think i was a bit of a dick and feel sorry for me i don't really bother writing much in this diary still the sorts of things that would get it published (laughs) (laughs) we'll be going into great details about how i'm losing all my friends but i'm not very good at that This is really the main difference between me and, say, Anne Frank. (laughs) And I'd rather be the victim of my comedy be myself, which it usually is. So to examine, you know, I think writing the blog and and getting those more personal shows and being more honest about who I actually am, rather than Lee and Henry, which was like a character that wasn't really, bore very little relation to what I was actually like in real life. Maybe to what I was a bit like when I was a teenager, but it certainly wasn't that much like as a, as a grown man yeah I mean this the scope thing isn't um, it's not I've got no connection really with the uh, with the cause at all oh. and I was doing a bit of running and people kept on saying you should run the marathon and someone said look I'm doing it for scope if you do it for scope which is true of all chapters as it turns out if you do it for scope they'll pay for your entrance as long as you raise a certain amount of money so that was the original connection was that I was just wanting to run the marathon and there was a place that they would give me you know and but really it just you know it just happened and I ran the marathon for them and then I was actually with Talking Cop trying to raise money for a testicular cancer charity with the programs in Edinburgh specifically I just thought it'd be nice to give out a free program and um they were suspicious about the show and didn't like it and didn't, they were too worried about it and they said what do you want from us and I said nothing I want to give you some money and a free advert uh, and they wouldn't do it or you know and I gave them the money anyway but they wouldn't they wouldn't be involved and then I said you know when I came to do it again I said uh, well would, were you do you want to get involved to the person I met at Scope and they said yeah you know well if you can get you know basically what happens is Scope will pay for the programs but the programs will be paid for by adverts and donations so they'll put the money up front, but there'll be already money back. And I say, if we don't make the money back, I'll give you any money that you don't make back, obviously. So there's no risk for them. It, and um, so, you know, I've got a lot back from it as well. So it's not, I don't, it's not, I'm a great person. <laughs> and I never sort of said that and I'm doing it. I started it for largely selfish reasons or largely, you know, self-interest, I suppose. Uh, but, you know, it just is one of those things that's turned out that everyone kind of gains from it, I think. So it's a nice, nice thing to do. I mean, I'm, try- I'm touring, obviously, Christ on a Bike next year, and, and I think we're going to do some more, as it occurs to me, next year, and I'll carry on doing the podcast, and hopefully, with the Collins and Hair podcast, podcast we'll do more live when it goes. If it stays at this level, I'll be more than happy. Uh, if it goes, you know, if it can go a little bit further, then that's good. But I'm not sure I really want to get um, to, you know, I'm kind of, I, I'm, I'm conscious that it's just nice to have my group of whatever, you know, I suppose 50,000 people came to the tour last year, and... You know, if you get that up to 100,000 people going to see you on tour every year and 10,000 and buying something from you every year, then that's a very, very viable uh, living, you know, and a nice way to go. And I'm hopefully, you know, creating interesting stuff, hopefully. But I'm getting old. It'll probably all fall apart. Look at Ben Alvin. <laughs>